Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna Sophia, if you're new here, and I post home decor and DIY content every Sunday. And this Sunday, we are going to be doing something just a little bit different. You guys loved when I did the compilation video of my favorite thrifted DIY projects that I've worked on since the course of my YouTube journey. And I thought, why don't we do the exact same thing but make it for Ikea instead? You guys know how much I love Ikea. I'm always hacking Ikea things. So this list is just a compilation of 10 of my favorite hacks that I've done using Ikea products. Products. So with that being said, let's get into our first IKEA hack. For our first Ikea hack, I really wanted to make a woven cane stool. And my favorite stool actually from Ikea is called the Curie Stool. It is $12.99, which is already super affordable. It's got a really beautiful modern design, but I really wanted to figure out a way that I could add some cane webbing to this project. So I ordered this cane on Amazon. It was actually really affordable. I'll make sure I link it in the description box below. And I'm just kind of messing with it, playing with it, seeing what's gonna look right. And if you do exactly what I did, you'll definitely have some cane left over if you order the one from Amazon. So I just followed the instructions to a T with this cane project. So the first thing you have to do is soak the cane webbing for 30 to 45 minutes and then you will want to soak the spline for five to 15 minutes. So I just set a timer on my phone for 40 minutes to get the cane started. And then once I was about 30 minutes out, I added the spline. So the spline, if you're not familiar, is what's in the frame right here. And it's just kind of like the rotting for the cane. So I'm just sketching out the stool, the cane, and where I'm gonna add everything and how it's gonna look and the idea that I have on my mind on paper so I know what to follow. Also invest in some good scissors and some Gorilla Glue sticks because that made this project go so much smoother. Cane is such an interesting textile to work with because after it's been soaked, it becomes so much more malleable to work with. So I'm able to kind of manipulate it around the back end of that stool. So now that I've determined kind of how much I'm gonna need, I'm just trimming off that bottom part that I know for sure I'm not gonna be using anyway with my scissors. I'll make sure I link these scissors in the description box below. They are amazing. And I can't believe I did so many fabric projects without them before. One thing that I did find to be helpful was just to fold the cane webbing in half so that way I could create the same arch and then cut the same amount off of the bottom so everything was nice and symmetrical and matching on both sides. In order to attach the cane to the back of the stool, I went back and forth with this so much, but I ended up going with Gorilla Glue for this portion. I did use my staple gun at the end, but for this part, I decided it was gonna be best to just apply some hot glue. And surprisingly, the hot glue with the soaked cane was still totally fine. It still adhered really well to everything that I was doing. So I gave myself a little bit of slack on the cane just to make sure that I could always, you can always take away stuff, but you can't always add it back. So I just did one archway around with one splash Line, one solid piece and then I'm just trimming off the excess and then I'm taking another piece of spline and attaching it directly to the back of the stool so then that way everything is really contained and it looks really well finished and basically I just kept adding on those splines to make sure that all of the glue and all of the pieces that were like attached together with glue were all kind of being disguised and hidden so then that way everything was like really clean So I'm just pulling down on these bottom pieces to see how it would look stapled. And I really liked how that looked, but before I staple it, I just wanna make sure that everything was really well solidified because cane does tighten as it dries. So I didn't want there to be any like weird bumps or anything like that. I just didn't know because I've never worked with cane before. So I wanted to make sure that everything was kind of like dried first before I clamped it down for good. Another thing that I did do, um, I didn't like that cane at the bottom, like at the base of the stool part. So I decided to take one of the splines and cut it in half. So then that way I could kind of add almost just like another like little detail, but just to give it a more clean finish. And um, I just did that with my scissors and again, applied that with some hot glue. And I had just a little bit more of that spline left. So I decided to add it to the top just to make it one solid piece. And I stapled the bottoms down to the base of the stool.
second Ikea hack I wanted to share with you guys is the Sorzo rug basket. I've seen so many people do this Sorzo hack where they use paint and they make art or they make pillows, but I've never seen anybody do what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. I was really needing some cute decorative little storage baskets for my son's nursery. And obviously these are just gonna go in the closet, but you want it to be nice to look at. And these are so affordable. These are supposed to be little mini rugs and they're only $3.99, which is an incredible price, especially with all the fringe and the detail. It's actually a really nice rug. So the first thing I'm doing, I'm just trying to iron out some of those wrinkles just because I want to be sure before I start sewing and gluing that everything is exactly how it's supposed to lay. I'm going to show you guys how to do this two ways. The first way I'm showing you guys is how to do it with a hot glue gun. You want to make sure that the tag is facing out and that your seams are matched up pretty perfect. So I'm just making sure everything is nice and together so then that way it'll be nice and even when I glue it down and it won't be all wonky. So I'm just taking my hot glue gun and I'm simply just gluing down each side of the side of the rug. If you don't have a hot glue gun, you could probably use some sort of fabric adhesive if that's what you prefer, but this hot glue gun worked perfect for that. And honestly, less is more, just because I didn't want a bunch of glue popping out on the sides. So I'm just simply using a little dab of glue, just a little line of glue all the way down either side of this rug. Now that you've finished the one side, it's just time to do the other open side, doing the exact same thing, just doing a little lines of glue. I wouldn't do one big line just because the glue might dry towards the end, it might get weird. So just go in small little, I did like one inch sections and then pressed and then waited a little bit and then went again. And now that we're glued down on both sides, it's just time to turn it right side out. That's why you glued the bad side down first because you want what's showing to be the good side. Now that you've turned it right side out, I wanted that fringe part to be exposed. So I'm just folding that over the front and the back um, just to give it a little bit more detail. And just showing you guys again, you can also do this with a sewing machine. My sewing machine isn't anything fancy. I got it off of Amazon. Now it doesn't take the thickest of fabric, but luckily this rug is thin enough that it's able to be fed right through. But let's say you don't have a sewing machine. You can absolutely just do this old school needle and thread. And obviously sometimes these things that we use, it's just to make it our lives easier, not necessarily because I couldn't do it without a sewing machine. So just try to keep that in mind. So all in all for this storage basket, it still really only cost me $3.99 because I had everything else that I needed. For the third Ikea hack, I'm gonna share with you guys how I transformed the Hemnes shoe cabinet. The first thing and major change I wanted to make was I just didn't really like the legs anymore. They just were a little peg leggy and I wanted to give this more of a mid-century feel so I just asked my husband to use the circular saw to just saw those right off. If you don't have a circular saw and you just have a just hand saw like we're using here, that's also fine. A lot of sometimes what we use is more just for speed and not really because you couldn't do it if you didn't have that specific tool. Now that the old legs are off, almost, almost off, and now we're all the way off. So now that the old legs are gone, I needed to add some new legs and I found these ones off of Amazon. They were a super affordable price, but the problem was the diameter of the legs that I ordered was just a little too big. So we needed to add a slab of wood to the bottom so that the new legs would have something to attach onto safely. Now I got lucky, I happened to find this spare piece of wood on the side of the road, but if you don't get so lucky, you can just make a trip down to the hardware store and just have them actually cut the wood exactly the size that you need to make sure that it's gonna fit nice and snug underneath this cabinet. And now it's just time to cut that piece of wood so we can place it at the very bottom of this cabinet. Now, no one is going to be seeing this. Again, this is just for function more so than anything else. So now that that's all cut down to size, it's just time to pop it at the very bottom of the cabinet. And again, no one is gonna be seeing this. So there's a little pocket at the very bottom. So I'm just placing it in that little pocket and making sure that it's nice and snug. And to make sure that it stays nice and put, we're just going to be attaching these brackets. These brackets are super affordable at the hardware store as well. So we're just screwing one on either side, one to the new piece of wood and one to the existing cabinet. And just because we're perfectionists, my husband decided to bust out our very high tech clamps. You don't really need these if you don't have them, it's not a big deal. So he's using these clamps here and we're just making sure again that it's nice and snug and he's going to screw in the other screw to the scrap piece of wood. 
And now that we've created the new base for our cabinet, it's just time to add our new legs. So in order to do this, I'm just placing the leg right up next to the brackets that we had used, and I'm just marking exactly where the screw needs to go into. Now these legs did not come with the drill bit you would need to drill this hole in order for the screw to go through. So that would be something that you would also need to get at the hardware store, but again, very affordable, around probably five or seven dollars. And now using the drill bit, I'm just gonna drill all the way through. Now the screw that came with the legs is actually quite large, so that's why you wanna drill bit this big. So I'm just drilling that all the way through to the back of the base of the cabinet. And when that part's all finished, it's just time now to add the brackets that it came with. So then that way it creates the groove that you'll need for the screw for the leg to go through. So I'm just screwing this in with my drill and it's just three screws all around. And then the main screw goes through that middle hole. And now that that's all screwed down, it's just time to put the main screw in to the actual leg itself. And I just did so using a little Allen wrench. And this is how the legs are looking at this point. Give you guys a little sneak peek before we do the big reveal, but first we have to paint now. So before you paint any Ikea furniture, you need to prime it because if you don't prime it, it'll have all these little weird streaks because there's a finish on Ikea furniture that it's it just doesn't take to normal chalk paint or other paint well. So you definitely wanna use a good primer and I'm just rolling it on there really well. I actually did two coats of primer to make sure that everything was really nicely covered. I know this part is actually really hard to see because the furniture is white and so is the primer. So now for the paint, now's the fun part. I loved the white, but I just wanted to change. So I ended up using this one by Bear. It's a chalk paint and it's called Fresh Earth. And it just felt a little bit more organic, a little bit more grown up. And that was really the vibe that I was going for. So I ended up needing to do three total coats of this paint. So I ended up using pretty much the whole can to cover this entire cabinet. I did the faces first, and then I did just the rim of the faces on the sides. So total cost of this makeover for this Ikea cabinet, the cabinet itself is $99. The legs were only 13. The scrap piece of wood I got off the side of the road, so that's free. The brackets were only two bucks. The primer is $11 and the paint itself was 20 bucks. So all in all, for $146, I have a beautiful mid-century modern cabinet. For the fourth Ikea hack, I'm gonna share with you guys how I made these twisted tapered candles inspired by Katie Bookser. And I wanted to show you guys my interpretation of this DIY. So the first thing I'm taking from Ikea are these black candlesticks and they're beautiful as they are, but I have so many black candlesticks and I really was interested in doing some gold ones. In order to do that, I'm just taking some of my favorite gold spray paint by Krylon in metallic gold and giving that one even application. Now that the holders are all done, it's just time to do the fun part, which is the twisting of the candles, which I think is just, it's such a trendy kind of like funky DIY that I've been dying to try. So when I saw Katie do it, I knew I had to try it too. So the first thing you have to do is take your candlesticks and place them in some warm water. You want your water to be warm enough to be able to manipulate the wax, but not too warm that you start to actually melt the wax because then you won't be able to work with it. Now it's just time for the fun part, which is the twisting and turning of all the candles. Now, obviously you can do whatever shape that you want. I'm a pretty simple person. So I didn't go super crazy with this, but I definitely pushed myself outside of my comfort zone. The only, I guess, sort of like extra tool that I used was just like a little rolling pin just to kind of flatten out one of the candles. But otherwise I was able to use just my hands for every other aspect of this DIY. And once you are happy with the shape and you like the way that it looks, it's just time now to put it in some cold water so it can really solidify in that shape. And this is how our twisted tapered candle holders turned out. 
for the fifth Ikea hack, I wanted to show you guys how I made these mod circle pendant lights. I really wanted to make some interesting pendant lights and I've seen this done so many different ways, but I've never seen it done this way. So I wanted to give it a try and I am using these ordning holders from Ikea. They're mainly used for utensils or really whatever you want to put in them. They're great storage um, containers, but, and they're so affordable. They're only $2.99, I think for the small ones. And I think $5.99 for the bigger one. So also you can order these on Amazon, which is where I ordered the two smaller ones. I already had the bigger one, so. And also from the dollar store, I ended up picking up one of those wire basket hangers um, only for $1, so super affordable there. And I'm just breaking off certain pieces from each chain. So I want one chain to be very short, one chain to be kind of in the middle, and then one chain to be very long because I have three lights that I'm trying to create. And because my clip would, wasn't big enough, so I had to add one of the chain links directly onto the top, so then that way I had something to attach it onto. So the silver is fine, but I don't really have silver in my house, so I decided that I was going to use um, some gold spray paint. I'll make sure I link it in the description box below, and then I'm also going to spray the chain as well. So there's not really a great way to spray paint chains like this, so I just kind of laid it out as best as I could, and then I had to just keep flipping it around to make sure that I got all of the areas. And then I flipped all of those cans upside down to make sure that I got the inside really well as well. And I probably had to do two solid coats of everything to make sure everything was really well covered. And then I ended up doing a poly acrylic coat as well because I wanted to make sure nothing scratched off. And after the spray paint had all dried, I just attached that chain to the canisters and I wanted to kind of see how they were hanging. If I needed to readjust something, I would have, but it actually kind of worked out well. So um, I ended up doing a smaller one, the longest one, and then a smaller one as well at the bottom. So I felt like this looked the best. I think it would look even better if I had five canisters and really kind of like was able to hang down, but I was content with the three. So now was the big thing. How do I make these lights, right? Because I can't feed a cord through every single one of these. So I decided I opted for battery operated lights. I'll make sure I link the ones that I used. They're from Amazon. They were really affordable and they actually worked really, really well and gave off the prettiest lights. So definitely recommend these ones. They take three AAA batteries. I have no idea how long they last because I just got them, but so far so good. And they come with a remote, which makes it even better because this is up very high. So I just hot glued all of the base of these lights to the inside of the can. And then I just pop the lights in there and I think they give off the coolest light and it's actually amazing that there's no cord attached to it. For the sixth IKEA hack, I wanted to show you how I made this side table using the Marius stool. The Marius stool is $5.99. They do still sell it at IKEA, which is a really nice price to begin with. But honestly, the top of it just looks cheap and plasticky. So I've had this wooden kind of plank thing that I picked up from the thrift store, and I never really know what to do with it. So I'm actually just going to flop the tops out for one another. This is probably gonna be one of the easier flips of the bunch because literally I'm just taking the top from this one and exchanging it for the wooden plank. The only thing I really needed to do was unscrew the top and then I removed the bumpers off of that tray, which I understand why they're there because you don't wanna scratch your table, but I don't need them and I didn't want anything to be uneven when I was gonna screw the wooden plank to the base. So after I removed all those little weird bumpers, I had to sand some of them off because some of them were on there like really, really well. And after I did that, I just flipped it upside down and I wanted to pick a screw that was not obviously going to puncture through the top, but enough to give it a nice secure hold. Before I fully committed to the placement, I just screwed each screw down about 70% and then when I determined if it was like the right spot, I sealed the deal and screwed them in all the way. So the Marius stool is only $5.99 and that wooden plank I had got from the thrift store was I think $2.99. So for under 10 bucks, you have a cute little side table that looks so much better, so much chicer. Chicer? Is that a word?
For the seventh IKEA hack, I'm gonna show you how I made this Memo Cork Trivet Mirror. The last time I was in Ikea, I went to the As Is section and I found this set of three trivets, which was great because I actually needed two of the smaller trivets just for my kitchen. But the bigger one, I was like, totally I can make something different out of this. So I decided I was going to make a little memo mirror that you can hang maybe in your entryway or perfect for a dorm. The first thing I'm doing is I'm just painting this all with acrylic black paint and letting that dry. I did the front and back just to make sure everything looked really symmetrical. And then I decided to take some cream acrylic paint and just give it a little speckled effect just to make it like a little bit more interesting. And the way you do that is you just wanna make sure you're putting the paint on one side of the brush so that way you're not you know, spraying yourself in the process. Done that before, don't recommend it. So just dab the brush on one side and then flick it. And the mirror I've actually had for a long time, it came from the Dollar Tree a million years ago. So all I'm doing now is I'm just placing the mirror directly in the center of the trivet and I'm just hot gluing the back of it to the actual trivet itself. Um, this was actually pretty easy to do because there was a little gap there, so it was able to be filled with some hot glue. And after that was all done, I needed some screw eyes. You can find these at your local um, Michaels or Hobby Lobby. They're really inexpensive. I got this pack of five for under $2 for sure. And all I'm doing is I'm just um, placing them in the appropriate spot. What's nice about this is because the trivet is cork, I didn't need to drill or any sort of like heavy machinery. All you need to do is screw this into the cork and it stays perfectly fine. And I just spaced them out based on the distance that I thought made sense based on like the chain I knew I was gonna be hanging on there. But do that to your preference if you'd like. After both screw eyes were screwed in, it's just time to add the chain. Now the chain I actually had, it's a plant hanger from the Dollar Tree and I'm just taking two of the clasps from the actual plant hanger itself and attaching it to one of the chains so then that way it's nice and secure and I have something to clip on and off. So for just about $6, I have a really cute different mirror that is totally taking something unconventional and making something really unique out of it. For the eighth IKEA hack, this is actually one of my favorites, and that is just to make some faux floral stems. I'm gonna share with you guys how I made these pink floral stems. Now, all you need for this project are really any faux florals that you might have. I have this set of three from IKEA. I've had it for years and I never use it, so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to use it. And the inspiration from this came from Pottery Barn. It's very trendy right now to have extremely long stems, but kind of like wispy florals coming off the top of the branch. So I just went outside and I picked up a couple branches that were about 50 inches long. And as for the floral, I'm just removing just the actual flower part and then I'm attaching it to these little prickers that are on the branch itself and applying just a small amount of hot glue so they stay put. And obviously, like I said, you could apply this to any faux florals you might have lying around your home, but these ones worked out really, really well for my Kia. So this is how they turned out. For my ninth IKEA hack, I'm gonna share with you guys how I made this really, really tall branch floor lamp. The first thing I needed to do was find a large branch. I found this one in my backyard and I just simply pulled the bark off. This is a lot easier to do if your branch is wet and I was lucky because it had just rained, but if not, you could just take your hose and just hose down a large branch to get the same effect. And after I cut down the branch to size, I needed to figure out a way to get it to stand upright. So I decided to use cement. You get this huge pack of cement for only $10 at your local hardware store. And I used only about half of it before sticking the branch inside. So after I got the consistency that I needed, I simply stuck the branch right in the middle of this plastic container. You wanna use a plastic container that you'll be able to easily peel off. And then to secure it, I'm just taking some scrap wood and screwing it around so I can get at the proper positioning for the branch. 
and then I just let everything sit here for at least 24 hours before removing any of the parts just to make sure everything was really nice and secure. I did pick up this planter from Ikea. It was part of their Winterfest collection after Christmas and I only paid $2.50 for it. So definitely go shopping in Ikea after Christmas because you can find some really good deals. And now that the cement has all dried, it's just time to peel back that plastic bucket. The cement isn't really for aesthetic, it's just for function. I just wanted to make sure that when I put the branch in the planter that I bought from Ikea, that it was nice and secure and wasn't going to just fall over. So now I'm just cleaning it off with my broom and just getting it ready so I can put it in the Ikea planter. And now that our base is all built for our floor lamp, it's just time to string around the Hema light fixture around the main part of the branch. For a floor lamp, this is a very affordable DIY. So for the Hema light fixture, it's only $5. The light bulb that I chose was probably one of the more expensive ones, but because everything else was so cheap, I wanted to make it a little bit more expensive looking. And that light bulb was on sale at Ikea for $9.99. The branch was obviously free because I picked it up outside in my backyard. The planter I had gotten on sale, but you could obviously use any planter. And then the black spray paint that I sprayed the planter with was about $3.49. And then and the cement was only $10. So for the total cost of a floor lamp, this was only $31. and I saved the best for last. You guys loved the media unit that I did with the contact paper, so that is number 10. But I won't bore you with all the little details I had to do to fix the cabinet because if you're buying this from Ikea outright, you shouldn't have to do any of the weird things that I had to do. So let's just get right into the flipping part. Before I do any sort of a flip, I always look to inspiration as to what I wanna turn this into. There was nothing wrong with this cabinet. It just felt very like college -y to me, kind of like a locker room you use in grade school. So I wanted to give it a once over with some black spray paint and then we are actually going to be using contact paper for the top. I saw this metal cabinet on Overstock where it was black on the bottom and had a wooden slat on top and I thought it looked so chic. This contact paper I chose was from Amazon and it was $9.99 for one roll and I used the entire roll for this top piece. Like anything else, the contact paper that you choose is very important because I feel like the one that you might find at Dollar Tree is just the quality is not gonna be there and this one I feel like was really nice, really good quality and I feel like it looks super realistic. The first thing you wanna do is start with one end of the contact paper and use a putty knife or use something that has kind of a slatted edge to make sure that your contact paper is going over nice and straight. Even though you can make it as straight as possible, there will be some air bubbles. So one of the tips I learned when you do have air bubbles is to take a needle and kind of puncture the bubble and then just kind of smooth the area over it because you're not gonna see that little poke that you just made, but you will see a bubble. So I just did that repeatedly until I got all of the air bubbles out. If you're really good at wrapping gifts, you'll be very good at using contact paper because it's a very, very similar concept. You just wanna make nice, straight, clean cuts and you should be in good shape. I did learn that when it comes to the corners, it was better to just kind of make a diagonal cut and then kind of fold over, which made it look a lot more seamless. And now that we got our contact paper all on top, it's time to just deal with the knobs now. The knobs that I chose had to be big enough to fill that hole that we had removed the keyholes from. Something that wasn't included was like a washer or something that you could put on the other side of the cabinet to prevent the screw from just coming right through. So you needed something as like a barrier. I didn't have a washer, so I actually just took this old sort of circular piece from a different knob and it worked out perfect. I feel like the knobs that you choose can dramatically affect how a piece ends up turning out. So these are kind of, I mean, $4 each, which is kind of expensive for knobs, but if you only need a few of them, it's worth the money. And as you can kind of see in this clip, I already have my printer nicely tucked away back there. It has room to be there, which is great, and I don't have to see it all the time. So let's tally up how much I spent for this flip. So the cabinet was free because I picked it up off of the side of the road. The spray paint, I needed two cans, so that was about $7. The knobs were $7.99 and the contact paper was $9.99. 
So for under $25, I have a super chic cabinet that you would never know I literally picked up off the side of the road. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked today's video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because I post home decor and DIY content every Sunday. And I hope I see you guys next Sunday. Bye.